Hey folks, I'm back here. I'm sorry about the glitch that I was experiencing earlier. And uh, I'm going to make sure that uh, this is working here just fine. So let's take a deep breath here together and uh, to make sure that we are on the same page here. So let's take a deep breath together. And when we do that, we acknowledge the presence of holiness in our midst right now. We acknowledge in this moment the sacred nature of what we are experiencing right now. So here I'm just going to make sure that we're on here just fine. Okay, uh, they cannot hear me speaking so let me just make sure just fine. Okay. okay, I guess we are on. We are on right now. So I'm glad everybody can uh, hear me now. So, hey, Aaron, my husband, and a Axel, good to see you as well. And those other people that are with us right now. Look, I was talking about Christmas there. And I was having difficulty a little bit with the heat that I was experiencing that moment. So I heat up or I uh, raise the air conditioning just to make sure that we are here and that we're online. I'm using a new uh, audio here and I just want to make sure that we are online here. So I'm talking today about coming from zero to inspiration and this is how we are experiencing Christmas together here. And I'm using a Hawaiian forgiveness ritual called Ho'oponopono. Ho'oponopono. And if you stay with me right now, I'm going to deliver to you and convey to you a way to really experience the true spirit of Christmas. Keep in mind, Christmas, the time of Christmas is not a holiday necessarily. It is how we are approaching each and every day. Okay, so the holiday of Christmas is not special. It is only special to the extent that we re restrict the distribution of God's love to that one day. We can extend instead that self-same self uh, joy and bliss and joy and faithfulness to every day. Okay, so I hope that you understand this. And when you understand Ho'oponopono, you will understand it better. I have a friend in Miami, uh, Adriana Mattis, who explained this to me initially about Ho'oponopono and how it really related to A Course in Miracles as well as The Way of Mastery too. And we're going to talk about both of, both of those things as we are discussing this together. And if you're with me right now, if you have any questions whatsoever, I am here for you, okay? I'm here to set you on the right path. Hi, Paul. Good to see you as well. As I begin this, I want to explain to you what Ho'oponopono means in the first place. Ho'oponopono means to make rightly right, okay? And this is very helpful because it reminds us what Dr. Carl Jung once said to us, that enlightenment is not about imagining figures of light. But by, but by making the conscious or the darkness conscious. That is what our life is all about, is to be able to look at the darkness that we ourselves have miscreated in this world, to acknowledge that collectively and individually we have made a mess of this world. And I, I've said this before, but I'll, I'll restate it as well. And all mystics agree with me on this point. That all is well in this moment. And it is. But the world is a mess. And all of the correction that we need or have a temptation to do within this world is to try to correct the world externally. And that is BS. That is your belief system which is not going to bring you an experience of release and free or freedom. Because in that moment you are denying your responsibility as a child of the light to know that your, 
your your thoughts, your beliefs, your mentality does have a an effect within this world. So we cannot deny it. And when we deny anything that is occurring within our world, then we cannot transcend the confliction or the the conflicts rather the suffering that people experience each and every day. Hey, Jessica, good to see you as well. So if you have any questions here, I'm here for you as well. And Jessica, you're the best too, okay? And everybody should uh, look for Jessica's uh, profile on Facebook Live. She does a wonderful experience in Miami, so check her out as well. As I talked about Ho'oponopono a little bit with you, I was reminded uh, about a statement from the Urantia, which is a wonderful book itself. And in the Urantia it says, as you view the world, remember that the black patches of evil which you see are shown against a white background of ultimate good. You do not view merely the white patches of good which show up miserably against a black background of evil. When there is so much good truth to publish and proclaim, why should men dwell upon the evil in the world just because it appears to be a fact? The beauties of the spiritual values of truth are more pleasant and more uplifting than is the phenomenon of evil. Okay, so that's what we are talking about right now. So in other words, let me give you a different way of looking at this. So either one of the ways that you are looking at the world is one, you're seeing the world as a background of, of white with uh, figures of uh, darkness or shadows in front of it, and you are responding to the shadows, okay? Uh, through forgiveness and so forth, or you are seeing the world as a background that is fully uh, full of darkness. And all you see here in the interim is to see a few figures full of light. The opposite is true. The opposite is true. You are looking at the world with a background or a backdrop of light. And yes, you have a responsibility to deal with the shadows, the figure of shadows that come or arise in your field of awareness at any moment. So what I'm trying to convey to you is this, that you and I are 100% responsible for what we see in our world. Hello? You with me here? You and me are 100% responsible for what we experience in the world. Keep in mind that what you are interacting with right now is me, right? And so what I am trying to convey to you is that you are not responding to me directly, but you are only responding to your interpretation of me. And when that inter interpretation changes, then your perception of me changes. This is why your perceptions, your thoughts that you occupy your device with does have a huge effect in the world. Because I think that what people experience is a notion, a fallacy, that what is happening in the realm of effect or behavior is more important to them than what is happening in their mind. So let me say it this way. What happening, what happens in your mind is way more important and powerful than what is happening in the realm of effect. Because the world is nothing but a an effect. It's an outward picture of an inward condition. And when we change that internal condition, then the world externally will change accordingly. <sighs> I am responsible for what I see. I choose the feelings that I experience. I accept all the goals that I choose. And everything that happens in my world is a response of what 
I have harbored in my own mind right now. This is why A Course in Miracles says, hey, look out upon the world and see the suffering there. Is your heart not willing to give your weary brothers rest? For they stay in chains until you are free. Okay? This is how A Course in Miracles works. That you have to be to accept 100% of what is occurring in this world. Look, all of the suffering and the sadness and the disappointment that people experience is, for instance, they want to bring uh, a notion of bringing order to disorder. They look at, to the world and they say, oh, look, there's a lot of disorder here. There's a lot of chaos here. And my responsibility is to correct it by bringing order to it. That is a fallacy. That is never going to happen. Yes, you can bring a temporary correction in, in time and space, but it's not going to be permanent. And it's not going to be permanent until you and I, right now, allow our minds, our awesome and powerful minds, to accept what we are experiencing in time and space. Okay? All right. Let me see if we have any questions here before I go ahead. Hey, Cynthia, good to see you as well. Okay. So, I'm trying to remember who mentioned this, and I'll mention this in the comments below afterwards. But one fellow once said, look, there's a way of giving, or bringing to ourselves to a place of 100% responsibility for what we are experiencing in time and space. And the first step is that we ask to reach a place of recognition and courage and power and intelligence and peace. Okay? Secondly, we describe the problem and search out our heart for our share, share in it. This share may, for example, be a judgment we have made or a specific action or a memory that requires healing. I want you to get this, folks. I really want you to get this. So, for instance, if an event occurs in this world, okay? You know what? I'm going to use a really difficult one here. A difficult one. Because I like to use extreme examples for you, okay? So let's just talk about Trump. Donald Trump, okay? So I don't care whether you're a Republican or a Democrat. I don't care and I don't want to care. I don't want to know what you are, okay, or what you think you are. But let's just talk about President Trump, okay, because this is what I'm really referring to right now, okay. So let's just assume that that Trump is uh, presenting to the world a picture or an image that is awful, okay? Some of you think that he's awful, some of you think that he's great. So let's just hypothetically say that he's hypothetically expressing himself in an awful way, okay? So if my egoic mind sees that externally, okay, if I see it in the mirror that I'm looking at right now and I see, oh, obviously he is filled with competition, number one, or a highly interest in his libido, secondly, or his uh, his temptation to want to attack or blame or deny. I can see all of that. So if I see that externally then, right, I can then, with grace, with the guidance and the leadership of the spirit of love, to look into my own psyche and say, hey, Kevin, wait a minute here. Stop, stop judging him. Stop attacking him. Stop blaming him for your, your woes. And look into your own psyche and ask your own questions to yourself and say, Kevin, have you ever had a moment where you engaged in competition? And the answer is yes. Hey, Kevin, have you ever used your libido as a priority in your life? Yes, of course. Hey, Kevin, have you ever attacked anybody else? 
Yes. Hey, Kevin, have you ever engaged in judgment to another person or another organization or a political campaign? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So, in that moment then, I say, okay, I see what is happening externally in that device we call Donald Trump, right? It has coalesced into a being that is full again of attack, judgment, and so forth. But I can't blame him for this. I have to accept myself. My participation with judgment and attack and competition and lust. You see this? So when I bring the notion of forgiveness, for instance, then I'm not saying that my responsibility is not to forgive Donald Trump, but my responsibility is to bring forgiveness to my own mind by accepting my participation in producing an event that looks like judgment or attack or blame or sexual drive, whatever it looks like. You see this, folks? I know that you have questions here, so I'm right here for you to uh, ask her, ask, answer any questions that you might be having. I hope that you're getting that. So I'm going to restate it one more time. The second step here. We describe the problem, and then this IE is going to be Donald Trump that I'm using, and then search out of my heart my share in it, okay? This share may, for example, be a judgment we have made or a specific action or a memory that requires healing, okay? You see, so if I say, oh my God, Donald Trump needs to be healed, then there's something within my own psyche that needs to be healed as well. Otherwise, I would not have drew Donald Trump into my field of awareness unless I wanted to see it, okay? So I can't entertain a judgment internally and not experience it externally too, okay? Hey, Bob, good to see you. Gus, good to see you as well. And for all of those who are running through my field of awareness right now, I love you all so much. And uh, you are all pure light. So I'm here to engage with you as well. So the third step then is we forgive unconditionally and speak the four miracle sentences. And we're going to talk about this right now. And this is so powerful. If you miss this moment with you and me, it will be a capital mistake. Okay? I'm going to change the way that you look at the world. Guys, I love you too. Okay? Here it is, okay? These four miracle sentences. Number one, I'm sorry. Two, please forgive me. Three, I love you. And four, thank you. Okay? And then when we do these four things, and I'm going to give you a more thorough explanation of those four things. And then fourthly, we give thanks for the whole process and then we express trust and then we let go completely. Okay. So, now before I go through those four statements, uh, I'm sorry, please forgive me, I love you, and I thank you. I want you to consider something here. What Jesus himself or Buddha or Shakespeare uh, experience the same thing that I'm going to convey to you as well, okay? Uh, Buddha referred to what I'm referring to in this moment, the zero point, okay? What is the zero point? Zero point is that place in your own mind that you have placed yourself to, or to arrive yourself to, that place where everything that you are experiencing externally is brought to a zero point. In other words, that we have to understand the nature of the nothingness or the illusions or the fallacies that we are entertaining at any moment. Okay? So, by, by bringing 
a recognition and an acknowledgement that number one, I am sorry for the my participation in this experience as well as my ability to forgive myself or others for bringing this product into our world and then to bring love uh, as well as gratitude to the experience, then we can bring that ex whole event to a zero point. Because at the end of the day, we understand that what we are experiencing in the world externally is neutral. Now, I don't mean to convey that your thoughts are neutral. They are not neutral. Every thought that you think uh, manifests on some level in your experience in the world. But the world itself is an effect or a mirror. And because of that, it is neutral. It doesn't have a charge. It has no value and it has no meaning. All value, all uh, meaning, all energy, all power occurs here, not what is happening here as an expression. So Chase, Chase, uh, Shakespeare, for instance, called this zero point as a blank. Jesus referred to it as the rock. Upon this rock, uh, my kingdom will be built upon it. Upon this stone. Okay. So all of those three individuals, the Buddha, Shakespeare, as well as Jesus, refer to the same thing that I am conveying to you as well what I am calling the zero point, okay? And quantum physics, by the way, calls this the phantom force of nothing. Let me say this again. Quantum physics calls phantom force of nothing. This is why uh, I'm trying to remember the mystic... Um, uh, he, he refers to it as simply as nothing, 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 okay? And keep in mind as well before we go through the four statements that it's so powerful and if you just jet quickly out of this Facebook uh, video then again you're missing you are missing a huge huge tool to bring you to a place of of awareness and of love and of freedom okay and as we do that keep in mind that 95% of all information is subconscious that 11 million bits of information is playing right now in the subconscious. So we want to address the world and ourselves and our psyches and psychologies as well, uh, addressing the subconscious as well uh, instead of addressing the, the conscious. Okay, so let's start with the first statement that we are using here. Again, this is called Ho'oponopono. Okay. Okay. I don't, we don't have any questions yet, but I am giving statements here on Facebook Live. The first one is this. I am sorry. Here it is. And, and I'll give you, uh, in the comments afterwards where you can get this reference that I'm mentioning to you right now. I'm sorry. I apologize. I perceive that I suffer. And that connects me to my feelings. I no longer reject the problem, but recognize my learning task. I or my forebears, with whom I am connected energetically, genetically, and by tradition as much as my, as my history, has caused me. Now through the power of the spoken word, I am freed of this guilt. So let me just explain this to you. We're not talking about sin here. Sin is an hallucination. It's a fallacy. There is no sin. However, there are mistakes that we make. Okay? And we have an opportunity to bring those mistakes with correction. And that is what we are doing right now in this moment. So I want you to understand this so fully what when I am referring to a notion or a fallacy that we call sin, this is how it looks in your manifested world. If you are experiencing, for instance, guilt right now, if you are harboring 
in your mind, even for a moment, guilt, which is completely unproductive, then that guilt will manifest in your being. As you look in your past, and you will see that guilt manifest itself through the past as sin. And you will see it, if you look in the future, you will see it as fear. That is how guilt begins to branch itself into your your fear uh, sphere of awareness, your field of awareness. That's it. When you remove the guilt, you remove as well the sin that you experience as the past, and you will remove the fear as you perceive it as future. You are uprooting the very fallacy, the notion, the hallucination that you and I have placed it into our minds. Okay? So I'm not addressing then the notion of sin. That is an hallucination. What I am responding to are our mistakes. You and me, with 100% responsibility, accept that Kevin Rice, I know this is going to be very difficult for you to believe, but hey, I have made mistakes. What? Yes, I have. I have experienced mistakes in the world that we call time and space. But I can choose again. I can choose again. That is our responsibility as a light, uh, as a child of the light, as a child of the uh, of the day. Now I'm mentioning uh, guilt as well, because I want you to understand how you can really transcend all of this here. Those who feel guilt will ultimately create a scenario in which they punish themselves over and over again. This is what we call the cycle of sabotage. Okay? And we, we all call it the karmic wheel, too. And we're going to be on this karmic wheel as long as we entertain or giving any energy or attention to the notion of guilt. Okay? All right. So then secondly here, the first one is, I'm sorry. The second one is, please forgive me. Please forgive me. Please forgive me for having, through myself or my forebears, consciously or unconsciously, disturbed you and me in the course of our evolution. Please forgive me for having acted contrary to the divine laws of harmony and love. Please forgive me for having until now judged you or the situation and in the past disregarded our spiritual identity and connectedness. Okay. Keep in mind as well why so much uh, forgiveness is so prevalent in our, in our world and is necessary as we transcend that story through extreme forgiveness. Keep in mind as we go through the second statement here, please forgive me. We're not talking about the ego here. Okay, the ego always involves rejection and grudges. That's it. This is all, the ego is nothing more than a cesspool of denial. Okay, it doesn't want to take responsibility for what they are experiencing. Oh, I don't like the President Trump, or I don't like President. Uh, or the, uh, you know, or Clinton, for instance. I don't like that. So I'm going to repress it. I don't want to look at it, okay? I don't want to directly meet it face to face. And so therefore, I will repress it. I will get rid of it. So I don't have to look at it. And every time that we traffic ourselves in rejection and grudges, guess what? pop up over and over and over and over again in our field of awareness until and unless we bring a level of extreme forgiveness to it. Please forgive me. That's the second statement that we are dealing with right now. You know, it would be equivalent if, uh, 
you know, two boys are having an argument and their mother said, stop, stop this and, and apologize to each other. And one of the boys says, hey, I'm, expo- I'm apologizing on the outside, mommy, but I'm not uh, apologizing on the inside. Unfortunately, this is what most people do. Uh, they're going to give an outside version of forgiveness, but an internal version of it is anything but full of forgiveness. Hey, Lupe, Julius, I love you so much. You are pure light. So what I'm trying to convey to you then is that most people, uh, the world to them is nothing more than one big objection to itself. You get this? They object to what themselves have produced or created in their uh, miscreated world. That's it. Okay? And I want to mention this as well, since we're talking about forgiveness as well. That you never forgive the truth. You only forgive illusions. You only forgive illusions. This is what Ho'opono is all about. The whole thing of process of forgiveness itself is you and I understanding Bringing our minds, our awareness to what? The zero point, to the blank, to the void, or the phantom of nothing. The phantom force of nothing. You never forgive the truth. You only forgive illusions. You know, forgiveness is so freaking important to us that I hope that you and I understand a, a lesson from A Course in Miracles, for instance. And I have used this probably for over 20 years. Okay? When I see an event, a circumstance, a challenge that arises in my field of awareness, I say through my affirmation, forgive and this will disappear. Forgive. And this will disappear. You don't like what's happening here? The temptation of the egoic mind is try to improve or correct what's happening externally. That's not what is respond, that is not what is necessary for you to do. What is necessary for you and I to do is to forgive instead with extreme forgiveness. And when we do that, when we bring extreme forgiveness to it, um then the whole event, the whole uh, challenging circumstance that we are experiencing right now then becomes to disappear. It will disappear. It will dissolve into the nothingness from which it was born. That is how forgiveness occurs. You don't like something that is occurring here? Then bring forgiveness to it. And when you bring it, the extreme forgiveness to it, you will see it disappear into the nothingness from which it was born. And keep in mind as we are discussing forgiveness as the second step here, forgive us our illusions, right? This is one of my prayers. Forgive us for our illusions and help us to understand our true nature and our identity as a child of light. Because I know at the end of the day that God has never forgiven me, right? Because God has never condemned me, right? And I want my life to be in the same way, that I don't have to forgive you because I've never condemned you for anything, right? So then forgiveness is unnecessary. Forgiveness is necessary, however, if we judge or blame or attack the world or anybody else because of it for our own suffering or sadness that we are experiencing in time and space. Okay, I hope you're getting that here. Okay, Lupe, hi my friend Kevin, good to see you Luis, Uh, Eduardo, uh, uh, Becerra, Lopez, good to see you my friend. I guess you're out of the country at this moment, that's fine. Okay, we're going to go here to the third step here. 
And that is, I love you. Okay? I love you. Again, this is the stir, uh, the third step that we are utilizing what we call Ho'oponopono, right? I love you and I love myself. I see and respect the divine in you. I love and expect, I love and accept the situation just as it is. I love the problem that has come to me to open my eyes. I love you and myself unconditionally with our weaknesses and faults. So, wow, this is huge. This is huge. Um, I love and accept the situation just as it is. Just as it is. My God, just sit with this for just a moment with me, folks. Be with me for just a moment. I accept all things as they are are. Number one, I accept all things as they are because number one, what we are interacting with is an effect. That's it. A mirror. This is why A Course in Miracles says that perception is not a fact, but a mirror. So you're going to see the reflection of what's happening here in the mirror or the reflection that we are interacting with in our field of awareness. That's it. I accept all things as they are. Because if I don't accept all things as they are, what happens? Then I'm instantly at war with my own self. I'm instantly on the battlefield of time and space, of duality-driven thinking, in that moment. However, if I can step back and say, okay, I accept all things as they are, okay, I am at one with what I have produced in this world. And then, in that moment, I am free. Of course, the miracle says the Son of God, that's you and me, is in chains as long as he believes he is in chains. And when he sees himself as free, he is then free. How do I bring myself an experience of freedom? By bringing to my mind the peace of God. How do I experience the peace of God? By stepping off of the battlefield that I myself have created in this world. How do I do that? Through my judgments, through, through my blame, through my projections and so forth. When I, when I acknowledge that I'm doing this, when I bring the darkness conscious into my mind, then I'm at peace. Then I'm free. Then, I'm free. Hey, Rachel, uh, Rachel, good to see you, my friend. And uh, Pat Williamson, good to see you as well. So what I'm trying to convey is that you are either reacting to your past or you are acting from your present. So what I'm trying to convey to you is that what you really want to do is act, not react. Okay? So, in other words, when I act, I'm acting right now because I am right now moving through the eternal timeless now with you. You and I are interacting with each other and there's nothing that is separating me from you and you from me. Okay? You are me and I am you. I am that I am. I am that. I am everything that I am experiencing in this world. It is a reflection of what is happening internally in my own mind. And when I say my mind, I'm not talking about what's happening in the confines of I'm calling my brain here. I'm calling about my mind, our one mind, as this here that you and I are dancing in each and every day with each other. That's my mind. This is not my mind. This is an expression or a manifestation of one part of it, sure. But I'm not going to deny the fact that you and I are experiencing with each other a one mind, not seven and a half billion egos that I have to deal with on a, a daily basis, okay? Okay. Let, let's just talk about I love you here. I think that most people have really... Uh, a difficulty, uh, a difficult time dealing with, for instance, addictions. Okay. 
How do we transcend or begin to transcend uh, the story of an addiction, for instance, okay? And what I tell people in counselings as well is, for instance, if a person has a difficulty with weight loss, for or uh, about that, that was my somebody calling me in this moment here, but I'm still here. I haven't left left any time. Okay, so let's just talk about generally addiction in the first place here. Okay, so. Any addiction that you and I are experiencing right now, that addiction arises in our field of awareness because initially you and I believe that we are separate from what we think that we are addicted to, okay? So if I'm addicted to, say, for instance, lust, okay? When I understand that my responsibility in that drive of lust I have to not see it as separate as as something that is separate from me, but into st- instead to a- acknowledge that I am one with the thing that I myself have produced. You see, this is why addiction occurs is because the temptation of the egoic mind is to blame or attack somebody else for what you are experiencing personally, and when you take full responsibility for that. Then the addiction begins to what? Disappear. Because you see yourself as one with it. You see it as it is, not where it should be, okay? I don't know here. I'm looking for, oh, give me a moment. I'm looking for this this thing here. I'll I'll, I'll tell you a way to do this. And if I go, uh, let me look here, how much I'm dealing with my battery here. But I'm going to give you a way to do this here. Um... I want to give you the last one, thank you, but I want to give you something that will help you uh, incredibly well. So I mentioned the third one, I love you. So the fourth one here, and then I'll end it with a very exercise for you, okay? Thank you is the last one. So I'm sorry, please forgive me, I love you, and the last one is thank you, and this is from Ho'oponopono, okay, a Hawaiian ritual of extreme forgiveness, okay? Thank you. For I understand the miracle is already underway. I thank God and the angels for the transformation of my quest. I give thanks because what I have received and what will come to to pass is what I have deserved through the law of cause and effect. I give thanks because through the power of forgiveness, I am now freed from the energetic chains of the past. I give thanks that I may recognize and join with the source of all beings. So I want to restate one of the statements there. I give thanks because what I have received and what will come to pass is what I have deserved through the law of cause and effect. Again, there's a cause and effect relationship that we are dealing with right now. You think that, okay, let me explain it this way here. Okay, there is a cause and, and effect relationship, okay? So everything that uh, that occurs in my field of awareness, right, as cause, I'm going to experience the effects of it here, okay? I'm going to experience the effects of it here in this same uh, field of awareness. Uh, A way of the way of mastery mentions it as well. I can drop a pebble of, uh, uh, there we go. I could drop a pebble uh, into this field of awareness, okay, right here. What you're looking at is my field of awareness, right? I can drop a pebble of love into that field of awareness and when I do that I'm going to experience the ripples of the pebble that of of love that I'm dropping into this field of awareness the same is true about my field of awareness of any experience that I'm experiencing if I drop for instance a pebble of lack and limitation and fear and attack and just justification of our behaviors if I drop those pebbles into my field of awareness I'm going to be I'm going to experience the ripples of it as a as a result of it 
The egoic mind says, no, 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 that's not me. I didn't create that. I didn't create that judgmental, uh, blame-filled person I call a president. Yes, you did. And so did I. Collectively and individually, we said yes to separation. We said yes to blame. We said yes to judgment. We said yes to sadness and suffering and depression. And guess what? We are experiencing the effects or the ripples of the pebbles that I have placed in my field of awareness here. Okay, folks. I'm looking here at my iPad to see if we have any questions here. So, I'm going to do this, the last thing, uh, and this is going to help you. I promise you here, just give me five seconds here. I'm putting a little a dry, a line here. Uh, there it is. There it is. What is and what should be. Okay. So you're going to see this uh, backwards, and that's okay because the world that we are living in right now is essentially backward anyway and upside down. So get, you know, accept all things as they are, right? So here I wrote what is, and here I wrote what should be, okay? What is and what should be. So here is the problem of suffering here, is you and I, through our egoic mind, are placing what should be, what what the world should look like, or our relationship should look like, or what our our, our business should look like, or our classes uh, should look like, and we put a list here in our minds of how the world should be, or how Kevin Rice should be in this world, right? This list here is the cause, is the cause of all of our suffering in this world. Let go of what should be and accept instead what is. Okay? What is. Okay? What is. Accepting all things as they are. That's it. Because when I accept all things as they are, then I am perpetuating the reality that you and I are one. We are entering into a hemisphere of unity, of totality, of oneness. In that moment, by accepting all things as they are, I am removing the lines of demarcation that I have placed between myself and other. You see, when I look at the world and I say, oh, the world needs is broken and it needs to be fixed, okay? In that moment, I'm thinking that I have the, per, I have the responsibility to fix it, and I don't. My responsibility is to accept what is right now because in that moment, I acknowledge and take responsibility that I myself have either individually or collectively place this awful mess into my world. And because I've already done it, and it's already over and done with, all right, it's in the past. Then at that moment, I am one with it. Do you see this? Accepting what is. Letting, accepting what is, and letting go of what should be. You say, Kevin, wait a minute here. The world does need to be corrected. It has to be fixed. Yeah, it does. But that's an inside job, not an outside job. Because when, it, when you understand that it's an inside job, that means that you and I together acknowledge how powerful and awesome our mind is and the, thought, the thoughts that we are harboring in our minds right now. Boom! We're going to see it in 3D Technicolor each and every day. The moment that I say gloom and doom internally, then gloom and doom is outside and boom, it occurs. When I accept my responsibility for that mentally, 
That is where the level of correction occurs. The level where the level of mind where the error occurs. It did not occur out here because that's already over and done with. That's an effect. That's a mirror. But I can choose again right now internally. I can change what I'm experiencing right now in this moment. I don't like that guy. I don't like that girl. I don't like this business. I don't like the classes that I'm doing. I don't like the, the, the president that I have to interact with on a daily basis by seeing him on the TV. Yeah, yeah. I can accept all things as they are. I can choose again. Instead of attacking our president or attacking an organization or an individual, in that moment, I can choose again. I can through acknowledging that I'm sorry, and secondly, asking forgiveness. Third, that I love what is happening in this world. And then fourthly, I say thank you. Thank you. So in other words, you are enfolding that event or that person or that circumstance with love and compassion and innocence. And when you change your mind, then your world will change instantly. Instantly. Okay, I guess I'm done here, folks. Uh, look, I'm looking at any questions that you may have here. I'm looking right now. Thank you so much for uh, joining with us today. Uh, a few things before I say I love you. Uh, one is I am going to be back at Unity on the Bay in Miami. I think it's January or not. Uh, yeah, January 12th, whatever the first Sunday at Unity on the Bay. I'll be there. Okay, we're going through A Course in Miracles together based on the handwritten notes of Helen Truckman, as well as The Way of Mastery. We had a wonderful class. Uh, the last time I was at Unity on the Bay, going through this as well. So this is my second class there. Um, also, I want to thank you so much for your participation here in this uh, Facebook Live. And folks, whenever you like us here or share what we are experiencing right now, when you extend it to other people, you know, you're not here to enrich Kevin Rice, okay? You are to extend and express the good, the holy, and the beautiful. How can you do that right now? Share this video right now. If you know that there are people out there that needs to hear what you just heard, share it, okay? Share it publicly, like it, okay? And when you do that, you help to extend and express the good, the holy, and the beautiful. That is what we are about. We are about the business of God and nothing less than that. And thank you so much, by the way, for your donations and love offerings to the Academy of Spiritual Awakening through our website, as well as uh, on her Facebook Live. And thank you, my my mother-in-law, Kathleen, is giving. Can you say hello to them? No, no, hello. no. Just, hello. You just go like that and go, hey. Hello there. Yes. Oh, there. <laughs> yeah, right here, right here, right here, right here. Hi, there, there, there she is. There she is. <laughs> okay, so you're giving me the, the calendar here. January... Uh, the first Sunday of 2000... 18. Did you say? 18. 18. So that would be January the 7th? That's it. Okay. I guess it would be January the 7th. But <laughs> I'm going to check that. I'm a little uh, skeptical about that. But that's okay. That's okay. And uh, so I'll let you know uh, through Facebook when I'm going to be back in Unity on the Bay. And I just want to thank you once again for your donations and your love offerings to the Academy of Spiritual Awakening through Facebook Live here, through our website as well. The donate button there is, we get that money way quicker, uh, quickly when you do it through the website, the Academy of Spiritual Awakening.org. And for those donations that come through mail as well, we're very, very much appreciated to all of your love and your support and everything, okay? We are here to express the good, the holy, and the beautiful, and if no one has told you today that they love you, allow me to be the first. I love you so freaking much, and you are pure light.